Yo, what's going on, guys? Christy Flakes here. So we just had such, such, such a W trade go through for the Memphis Grizzlies that it's literally not even funny, bro. Do not laugh. It's not funny, man. It's serious stuff up in here, bro. It's a good-ass trade, man. Okay, sorry. The Memphis Grizzlies are trading Patrick Beverly to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Wolves. 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 For Jarrett Culver and Juancho Hernan Gomez. Sources tell ESPN, bro. Sources tell ESPN. So, before we start talking about this trade, if you guys don't mind leaving a like on this video, remember, man, like, this time of year, really slow for NBA news, um, so dropping that like really helps grow the channel, helps with the YouTube algorithm this time of year, so thank you all so much for that, and of course, subscribe if you're new to the channel, as we are getting so close to 300,000 subscribers. Okay, man, so, uh, Patrick Beverly getting flipped around, kind of like crazy right now, right, man, but straight up, um... I'm a bit surprised that it was Beverly that I got traded because I was like, okay, Beverly, I mean, King of the Fourth Quarter said it best, man, right here. <laughs> Grit and grind. Let's go, man. So, uh, that didn't last for very long, but hey, the Grit and grind uh, Timberwolves, maybe that's a thing, right? Maybe that's a thing. So, when it comes down to it, um, I essentially like the trade for both sides. I really do. I, I, I really think you look at it. Uh, let's look at it from Minnesota's side of things first. Uh, Jared Culver, plain and simple, was not really part of the rotation. He really wasn't, man. Like, he was given some chances. Uh, in all due respect, too, he uh, definitely, you know, kind of uh, slipped up on some of those chances. A lot of that is that some players just take longer to develop than others. They just do. Um, and as far as Juancho Hernan Gomez, he has some starting experience at the power forward spot. But, uh, you know, he's kind of a, probably a toss-in player. But then you get Patrick Beverly. If this one thing that I think Minnesota kind of needed, it's a Patrick Beverly type of dude. Now, obviously, that could go one of two ways where Patrick Beverly his work ethic really ups this crowd, or it backfires kind of with Jimmy Butler and Cats like, leave me alone. Like, <laughs> let me just play basketball, leave me alone, bro. Like, I don't care, man. Uh, you know, it could definitely have that effect too. But I love Jared Culver going to the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, real quick, we'll look at Patrick Beverly, and we already kind of looked at him the other day. Um, you know, from the other video we did talking about him when he was just traded. But, uh, yeah, less NBA season, eight points per game, a uh, few assists, few rebounds, 42% from three. He'll be the backup point guard. He can play with d -Lo, He can play with Malik Beasley. It'll be kind of nice to play with Anthony Edwards, obviously. So, uh, that will be pretty good from that standpoint. Let me kind of shrink this down here a little bit too, bro. Let me do some of that. Sick! Sick, sick editing. There we go. There we go. Okay, so we got that going for us. So that there, there's that. Um, but also, I want to take a look at Minnesota and kind of the players they got back. Because I ain't going to lie, um, I've not watched the most. I've not really watched the most Minnesota games last season. I've not really seen the most out of uh, Jared Culver. So kind of taking a look right here. Looks like last season, he did have an ankle injury. Uh, it was it was not career-ending. That would be a very bad trade. Season-ending. Um, not season-career-ending. season well, maybe it ends his career if he's not good at basketball anymore. Not that he really ever was on the team. But, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're getting off base here. But, uh, yeah, let's pull up Jerry Culver real quick here, man. So, uh, I guess Juan Hernan Gomez, to get that out of the way. Uh, Juan Hernan, or Juan, or, I thought it was Juancho. I guess Juan is short for Juancho. Uh, seven points per game, four rebounds, decent enough three-point shooter, about 33%. You know, age 25, played a few games. Uh, started a few games too, but Jared Culver is the guy that we want to look at, man. So, yes, he was the sixth pick of the 2019 NBA draft. And uh, I remember when he was, like, drafted, people were really saying that this kid was going to be something special. But, uh, you know, in, in his two NBA seasons, he's been really anything but that. Uh, his first season, you know, rookie year, understandable. And even in his rookie season, it's like the fit, you, you, you were still kind of like, does this really make sense? Uh, but nine points, uh, three rebounds per game. Uh, you know, struggle with his efficiency, 40% field goal efficiency, 29% from three, about uh, 30%, I guess you want to round that up. And then next season, this previous season, um, you know, played 34 games, five points, three rebounds per game. Uh, shot horrible from three at about 24%. Now, like I said, you got the ankle injury. And the reason I like this risk, though, is because... Even for, you know, in, in all fairness to Jared Culver, his first two seasons were so unorthodox for any player coming into the NBA. Obviously, the first season, COVID was going on. Like, people were playing, they weren't playing, there was a bubble. I think Minnesota, didn't they make the play-in tournament or something like that that year? I don't know, but regardless, uh, didn't get to play, you know, a normal type of season. And then this previous season, you know, you still have... 
some COVID going on it, it, as far as affecting the league to some extent. Uh, but really, the big time thing here too was that with the injury, it's like he got the ankle injury, so he never really got a chance to get into his group of things and get, get the consistency thing going out there, bro. So I mean, and even regardless of that, looking at the roster last season, um, I just. <sighs> I, I see, I, I saw potential for him to play, but also I'm like, this Minnesota team is kind of built weird. It's kind of built weird already having like, you know, you had D'Lo, you had Ricky Rubio, Anthony Edwards, Malik Beasley. Um, I, I guess Jarrett, in my opinion, is probably more of a three than he is a two, I would say, at this point of his NBA career and just kind of the way he's built. But uh, I just think it was time for a, a, a new change of scenery. I think that's okay. I think there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. So real quick here, man, let's go hit up the uh, fan spo. We got a few uh, other things I want to talk about, really, when it comes to Jared Culver. So uh, we already know this trade's going to go through. If it's even, It might not even be updated on here yet because the uh, Grizzlies trade like just happened. So, oh, there he is. Recently traded Patrick Beverly. So this should be all updated. I just like to do this and see like how it affects like the win plus uh, or like the win loss column. Great thing about this website kind of tells you that. So, yeah, Patrick Beverly going over there. And we do have, uh, where he at, man? Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? Jarrett Culver going to the Grizzlies and Juancho Herning Gomez. I guess salary wise, too, does it really affect anything? Jarrett's still on his team option deal. Uh, Juancho's on a two year deal. Patrick Beverly, an expiring contract. I, I guess in the short term of things, going into 2022, it, it frees up more money because Patrick Beverly's contract will be expired. So, uh, yeah, that's fine, I suppose. Uh, let's try this trade. Maybe they go for a power four at that point. Or maybe it's a trade. It could be the beginning of a trade for Ben Simmons. Salary-wise, you know, you only got to give up one player instead of two. If Now, if I'm the 76ers, I'd rather have Jarrett Culver. But again, Patrick Beverly fits the 76ers team. Maybe you toss in some other guys. It, it could be the beginning of that, man. It really could. Uh, but plus zero wins for both sides. So pretty much saying it's a non-existent trade. Uh, I don't... Like I said, man, I, I feel like there's more to this right here. I, I feel like Patrick Beverly going to Minnesota, yes, he kind of helps. But at the same time, how much exactly? Um, I love the move for the Grizzlies. So real quick here, I do want to pull up... Let me uh, get all this stuff shrunken down here real quick, bro. I want to pull up... Uh, a game with Jared Culver because I've not really gotten like a chance to watch him too much. So, you know, just a quick little highlight reel here to see what he's all about. This is a uh, game where he dropped 20 points, six rebounds versus the Denver Nuggets. So it's about a three minute video. We're going to check this out real quick here. Just kind of get a feel for his game and kind of go from there. So here we go, man. Listen, now watch too much of him. A good defense right there. He's got some good length to him, man. Good athleticism. That was a bad, <laughs> a bitch ass pass, but. Look at that, he got some athleticism, man. Rebounding. This kid has a chance. Okay, before we I'll finish up that, let me pull up let me pull up Memphis real quick here. Cause I gotta see how this man fits into the rotation of Memphis. Cause I know they no longer have Justice Winslow. They have quite a few of guards on the team. So I'm hoping there's still a chance there. Um Yeah, I guess we actually probably want to look at let's go to the teams right here. Well, it's probably a better way. Cause this is gonna give us more of an updated feel for it. So yeah, Memphis Grizzlies roster. And we want to go to 2021. I did forget about Zaire Williams. I did forget about him. I mean, he's going to be getting some minutes. He definitely should be at least. Um, Kyle Anderson is more of a four. Dylan Brooks can play two or three. He'll be the starter. He'll be the starter though for sure. Lots of point guards slash shooting guards. Desmond Bain's more of a two. I do think there's a chance here, man. I do think there's a chance for this kid to get some playing time. There really is. It's going to be, you know, kind of competing for Zaire Williams and stuff like that. But overall, man, there should be a chance. So let's uh, go back to this. Got some decent handles to him, too. I see some promise here, man. I really do. I'm telling you, those first two seasons. So a reversal right there. Okay. Now, he's, he's got to get that three-point shot down, though. Like, he was wide open for the corner three in today's NBA. If you can combine that with the athleticism, then that takes you to a whole new uh, level. But, I mean, the way he's built, the way he can kind of handle in the paint like that, uses athleticism, that little fadeaway, you know how it reminds me of? DeMar DeRozan. It reminds me of DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, he definitely likes attacking off the off the uh, dribble like that, man. It's a good take, but uh, you'd love to see him here to get that get that mid range shot down, three point shot down to some extent. 
I mean, Demar is a three or is a, is a mid range god, so. We've really seen him just attack the basket, which is fine. Oh, damn, bro, I got some ups too. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Not bad. I like him. He's gonna be, he's gonna be good. Oh, 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 quarter three. PJ Tucker style. Okay. Yes, sir, man. Um, I don't know what that was, but uh, okay, man. Music sponsors star by Cole Cage. I think that was played in my high school prom. Uh, overall, is that all the highlights? Okay, so the rest is just music at that point. Okay, man. But uh, regardless, that's all we have for the video. Um, low risk trade. Uh, didn't really need Beverly on the Memphis Grizzlies. Like, I think he would have helped, but it is what it is, man. That's all we got for this video. Uh, be sure to drop that like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and peace out, my friends.